Uh, I stand before you this morning to, uh, to do let you know that uh, there are absentees uh, that have been turning into uh, the circuit clerk's office this morning. We are in the process of uh, getting ready to go out and do it on the last minute to see if the catch up that needs to be done. So I want to bring that to you first of all. I know you've been anxious and waiting to hear it. So I'm here to answer any other question that you may have regarding this process. Uh, this process has grown up uh, due to the fact that uh, we have some senior members on in our commission who are more and more uh, adapted, who have more experience with working with the what we call the wind boat, wind prep uh, master program machine. And <clears throat> that being said, that uh, I know you've seen me come before this board uh, a period of time. Uh, asking for training and what we call cross training on the machine so that uh, when it comes to a situation like we have now that the actual trading of the ballots and putting the names on the ballots on the machine would not necessarily rest in the hand of one person. So <clears throat> this is what we have uh, at late as uh, when these machines were purchased in 2002 uh, the senior people on the uh, next commission a body which is uh, Lee Rose, uh, Mayor Avery, Connie Cochran, got this training back in 2002 uh, with the machine as far as the, the proper way to put the ballots in and do that. Now, I've got some observational training over the years, but not fine tuned technical training because each time I asked for the training and, and brought to the, to the body, to the board, uh, it was always uh, voted down. Uh, for one reason I got well, I read and I got them on, but you know, somebody had to train you in order for you to do what you've done. So over the years, this is what we've had. As of uh, September 26th, 25th, 24th, and several weeks prior to that, I think in our last, one of the last board meetings out of 10, you uh, approved the, it needed to be in a contract with Madeline, Madeline Lennox, uh, that if, if the information did get done, and those were the splits that we was talking about, and to get the other 15 precincts that we needed into the same system before we could proceed in terms of making those changes with the redistricting. So that, that was done, eventually that was done. Uh, so what we have right now is, is a refusal uh, to work with me to, uh, to put the ballots on uh, the, the computer. I've done as much as I can do with the knowledge that I do have, which is limited. We also have spoken with the data processing department, uh, Steve Lasagna, uh, Steve Otis, uh, with them helping get that procedure done uh, to the best of their knowledge, they're, they're limited to two. But to give you a little history about uh, the AVS wind vote machine that we're currently using <coughs> is that uh, the company has gone out of business uh, for at least three to four years now. Uh, when the issue came up about buying the 300 used machine, uh, that a couple, uh, about a year or so ago, I wrote the letter uh, to, to deny that request and we go in the mode of we're looking for new machines. I did the request based on the fact that if we got new machines, that means that all five election commissioners would get the same amount of training on the machine from the person who we bought it from. So therefore, there wouldn't be a deficit of depending on one or two individuals to carry out the fine techniques on the final processes of, of, of um, carrying out the voting process, to put the ballots on, put the ballots on the machine. I've asked our senior members, uh, Connie Cochran and Mel Avery, uh, to help me in that regard. Uh, now, let me go back just a little bit further. Uh, each year uh, in January, when we uh, vote on our new member of the board, uh, I was elected chairman of the board at this time. Being chairman of the board for this year, I made assignments and I designated people to, in conjunction with working together because uh, we hadn't had that type of uh, cooperation in the past. So my effort was to bring everybody together, give everybody assignments, to work together, everybody work on everything together. So that did pretty good. We did all right in the primary. It wasn't a big problem. But uh, on September the uh, 26th and 25th, 27th, while our most senior uh, 
who has over 10 years of working on this system, refused to help me uh, bring uh, this election to pass. So that's where we are now. I basically had to uh, bring uh, the ballots to, to bear totally on my own arms with some help from the management and some help from uh, the other supervisor, which is Ms. Grave. But, you know, I have more experience with the machine than, than she has because of I'm eight years on the commission, she's on it four. And we have not gotten that technical training, even though we've asked uh, time and time and time again to be trained with cross training, so that if perhaps someone got sick or perhaps someone, God forbid, you know, passed away, that <clears throat> the, the, the uh, knowledge would be carried along with it. So uh, this is what we have as of today. Okay, uh, before we go to Mr. Strokes, let me just say that um, I found out about this issue this weekend. I am very concerned that if what you're saying is that you asked for help, and I want you to be very specific, if you can, that someone refused to help you. That's the first question I want you to uh, try to a answer for me. And the next thing is, is I started receiving calls as early as Friday. Um, regarding uh, cards that were sent out and that the cards were sent to Rome, um, or the cards that were sent out were wrong. And I called you and I asked you for this particular, uh, regarding this particular issue, how can a card be right in the computer but show up at an individual's door and be wrong? How can that happen, or, or can that happen, or why should it happen? And I guess the reason why I'm going to ask uh, the uh, computer person to come up in a minute to ask how that can happen or if it can happen, but what is your take on that? Because I have several of them here with me um, that I looked at and noticed that they still are located in one district when they were supposed to have been changed. I also got your email stating that you sent to uh, our... IT department stating to change them and your email was correct. So am I missing something here in translation or, or what are we doing? Well, uh, Andrew, and then we'll go directly to Mr. Um, Mr. Fisher had his light on and then we have to go to Mr. Stokes. Uh, as you know, uh, we were before this body uh, maybe three or four weeks ago. Uh, in the effort, uh, we have 15 precincts that the, that the redistricting, which was approved by the by the Justice Department that we changed for this particular general election. There were 15 precincts. Out of those 15 precincts, out of the whole 119 precincts, there were only two precincts that had splits, the Raymond One and Spring Ridge. Now, in order for us to send out those notification cards that we're back to do, uh, at first they had to be changed in sins. So uh, due to the cooperative effort, of uh, Derek Johnson, who was the author, uh, the, uh, along with your input uh, and your final decision uh, to do the redistricting, they went out, uh, Ms. Ms. Grave, Commissioner Grave, Commissioner Cochran, and Derek Johnson rode those areas to see where those splits would take place. Uh, but now we had 13 whole precincts that were affected. It wasn't a problem. But the splits uh, were a problem because they're a split basically on the line <clears throat> of supervisory district as well as commission, the commissioner district. And those splits were based on uh, the, the, the election commission of the supervisory district. Let me speak in terms of supervisory district because the supervisory district is the same as the commissioner district. Uh, super, uh, supervisory district uh, one was affected. All, all, all five districts were affected, but the split of uh, concerning uh, supervisory district two, four, and three, uh, Raymond one, uh, and Spring Ridge. So uh, once we got the split together, it was about two and a half weeks ago, we, we, we began sending out the cards, or initially sending out the cards, because Mr. Mr. Uh, Otis could not make send the card and let the information change in the sandwich. Commissioner Cochran then uh, they rode the road and saw what was what come back and she made the change. And we was informed then I was uh, informed then that the uh, splits have been done and corrected that we can now proceed with providing the information in Sims. So I had to erase what I had in Sims 
the presidential ballot and start over again. And I presented that ballot uh, in June for the presidential uh, election. So the splits were made and the, and, and the precincts were corrected. So I, at that point in time, I instructed uh, Mr. Uh, Otis uh, to change the the precinct of the from Spring Beach, which is four, now being there are three, and uh, and the, which my district was 69, 73, 91 of Spring Ridge. And in supervising the district one or two, it was 39, 41. Okay. Was uh, it done? Yeah, yeah, it, it was done. Uh, to my now, now you asked me how uh, could it uh, be done on the machine if it's not uh, incorrectly, I have no earthly idea. But I, I, I can't even speculate the fact other than that, uh, you know, um, I know it was changed in Sims. I do know that. I, I understand that. Okay. So you have to ask uh, the better process and individual uh, how that would happen. Okay. Let me, let me uh, if we go to Mr. Fisher, Mr. Stokes, and then I'll ask him that question. Mr. Fisher. Um, as chairman of the elections commissioner, I, let me start this off. I don't know, but I've been told. So I'm asking the service. Okay. Okay. As chairman of the elections commissioner, you're responsible for getting the ballot prepared. That's correct. And I understand that the 20, I think it was the 22nd of August, was the date that the ballots needed to go out in order for the military to, to, to receive them in time and to the vote. 22nd of September, sir. September, September, I'm sorry, September. Yes. Did it make, did, did, I, did the ballots of Hines County make that deadline? Uh, no. So, so, so we've got serving members of the military who are not going to be able to vote or whose ballots are going to be challenged to get in on time. Exactly what is our situation with that right now? Well, uh, the situation with that right now, and that's the part of the, the Justice Department, uh, not only uh, we're not necessarily talking about just the absentee vote, we're talking about what we call the MOVE Act, the Overseas Act of the Military Vote. Now, that's basically on the presidential side. Uh, basically, that was that was done. Now, that was supposed to be done by the 27th, no later than the 24th of September. So my question was: Are the are the ballots getting to Afghanistan, Kuwait, uh, 